opportunities, you reach for certain opportunities, and it ends up not being the the best um, the best decision in the end for you because you would have been what happened by going by reaching for one opportunity that seems tempting I and mean, temptation. Uh, Christianity talks a lot about temptation, but doesn't go into it's more than just a matter of of sin. Sometimes it's not a question about God and commandment and sin. It's a question about being tempt temptation being um, you're drawn to something that actually, in the end, is going to be less beneficial to you, and and it's a question of the yin and the yang, whether you're whether you should be going yin or yang, and sometimes temptation is when you're going in the direction you're going like let's say you're going yang when you should be going when yin would be better for you. That's not in Christianity, it's all about when you should this and should that. In Taoism, it's not about should or schmud. It's about what's going in the end to be better, more beneficial to you. Not that you should or shouldn't. You can do either way. You're, uh, you're free to choose yes or no either way. It's up to you. It's in your hands. The decision is in your hands and within your power. And you're free either way to do it as you choose, but what you will find is not a matter of should or sh- shouldn't or could, can, um, you know, must or mustn't. It's about what trying to learn what is going to be more beneficial to you, yourself, from your own point of view, in the end. And sometimes, when you go pers- temptation is when you go pursuing something that looks attractive, for instance, on Thursday I went out because there was a free exercise machine listed, or so I thought. It said stretching machine. I said, aha, this looks like this could be what I need for exercising. I went out there. I wheeled my other buggy there because uh, my bicycle tire was flat. My bicycle tire had gone flat, and I needed a new inner tube, so I couldn't ride my bike over there to look at the thing. And so it's with the buggy, so instead I had to just walk the buggy over there. Well, I got there, and it seemed to me it wasn't a strength building machine, it was just a stretching machine that seemed that I would probably not get any real use out of it. And if I had brought it back, it would have simply taken up space, which would not have been beneficial to me. So I let that opportunity go. It wasn't too hard of a decision. But at the same time, I realized, wait a second, I'm in West Newton now, and there's a bike shop right across across the way there. So I walked over to the bike shop, walked in there, and bought myself a new inner tube, which today is now what I sh- my first project should be, to replace that uh, tire on my bicycle so that I can actually ride my bicycle. But that wasn't... In- in- uh, if I had not... If... I had not been tempted by the ad for that stretching machine in the first place, I would not have ended up by the bike shop to buy the inner tube for my bicycle, which was beneficial to me. The The machine itself, the stretching machine itself would not have been beneficial to me, but the temptation of it drew me over there, and that was a good thing. So here's the the thing about the Tao, and that's the way the Tao is. Tao is the way the way rivers flow. Uh, a river flows in a meandering patterns because it will say uh, at this point of the river, okay, it feels like going over to the right, but then it gets over to the right and says, wait a second, there's a there's a little uh, there's a little stone ridge over here that, that I can't flow through, so. I better go flow to the left now. And that, <coughs> for whatever reason, to that river, it was tempted, it was like the river was tempted to go at going at the right at first, but then it found that that wasn't the right way to go at that point, and it had to go to the left. And it may very well be that from the point of view of the river, that going to the right was the perfect way at first, at that point. Because at that point in the river, although eventually it might its goal might be to go up not very far from where it was but there was no way to cross that straight line because it it might have been another 
another hill or another river, uh, another boulder of rock that was not passable. So the river finds the passable direction by going first to the right and then flowing to the left when it finds that's not passable. And it's that way with your life. Uh, the, uh, the stretching machine drew me over to the right but then I found that this, the machine itself was not, even though it had drawn me there, was not something that I should be devoting my energy to trying to take back. Instead, I redirected my energy. So that, let's consider that in the notion of flow, in the notion of the talus flow, whether of a river or the grains of wood or whatever, in a flow, and that's what tau basically means, a flow, a path, a way. When it's described as the way, it means not the way, the way Christianity says, this is the only light and this is the only way, and you must follow this, and if you don't, you're a heretic or a blasphemer. It's not like that. It's the way, it's, it's a way. The way is a way. The way is a way. It is a path. And it may be the path. It, it is the path that we have to choose, but uh, cross the path that we have to walk, but we're always walking a path. No matter what we do, everywhere we go, whatever, wh however we spend our time, we are walking, going down a path. Because time is a path. Time is a path that we are going down, or, or people describe time as a river. A river that flows, the, the, the river of time. And if it is like that. We, it is, we do flow down the river of time, and this flow is like the Tao. The Tao is the flow. It means so the Tao means way, path, flow, and time is this path that we are flowing down. Whether we choose to or not, we can't help it. We're flowing down this path of time, this river of time, and that's our Tao. And in every moment of this flow, there's a question, do we flow to the right or do we flow to the left? Do how every moment is an opportunity, and, and sometimes we are drawn in one direction, and then we find that that's not passable. But by flowing to the right and to the left, we find the most passable route, and that's what we're, that's why rivers meander because they have to meander to find the most passable route. When you look at the flow of a river, it has actually found. If the river seeks the point, the lowest point of, of least resistance, that's why rivers flow. That's why veins, veins and arteries flow through your body. They don't flow in straight lines. They have to find the path of the least resistance to, f to flow in a meandering pattern. Roots of trees. I have uh, the structure, the structure of, you look at roots of trees or plants, the roots of plants have a structure very similar to the structure of veins and arteries in the human body. Very, very much the same type of a flow. Because that's a natural path, that's a natural flow. And that's why you can see the same patterns in plants and in animals, in the, in the roots of plants and in the veins of animals because it's a natural flow it has, that it goes well beyond the notions of plant or animal or even life and, and life and an, animate or inanimate. It's uh, natural to the universe, these patterns of flowing. So the, the river finds the path of least resistance and that's, that ends up being the pattern the course of the river is the pattern of least resistance and to try to cut straight lines like human beings do when we make railroads for instance we have to blast through mountains we have to blast through mountains to be able to make the train tracks go in a straight line and even then even then you usually notice the train tracks don't go in a straight line they may blast down parts of mountains and hills and build up platforms on other places where they're lower so that the train is going fairly flat fairly flat but the tracks themselves are usually still meandering they, they have to 
not meander too much. They can't take sharp turns, but they still end up being a little bit curved around mountains or around valleys or wherever it is. And the, the tracks themselves do rise and fall, not too sharply. They can't go up at very steep angles, but they do have slight rises and slight falls. So even train tracks cannot be perfectly straight and flat unless you have this perfectly flat surface like, uh, you know, on the sand flats, but that's very rare to have those flat, those perfectly level flat uh, surfaces in, in a natural area. So everywhere you go, there's this question, and I have find myself asking, well, all those items, I saw that dumpster yesterday morning, I went into that dumpster, and I pulled out uh, about seven, I pulled out 70 bottles of this that amounted to eight and a half gallons of this expensive juice. I bet you could pay at least three, even four dollars, perhaps even five dollars for these juices at some uh, food establishments like a bagel place. You reach, they have a specialty case and four dollars, okay, that'll be four, ring it up, four dollars for the super juice and people pay it routinely. Four dollars time, that, that's two hundred, that's three or four hundred dollars worth of juices I pulled out, eight and a half gallons of this stuff. And, but I pulled out those juices, but in so doing, I passed up the other opportunities in that dumpster. I passed up uh, taking the metal door, I passed up taking the, those metal pipes, I passed up taking, there were even, there, there were a few juices that maybe that I could have gotten that were buried under uh, some glass windows. I don't think there were very many, but there, I could have maybe gotten a half dozen or even a dozen more juices if I dug out all the ones that were there. So I find myself looking back on this missed opportunity of the dumpster of what I didn't take, what I didn't seize in that moment because my window of opportunity, my window of opportunity of getting those items out of that dumpster was a time sensitive. Let's call it that, time sensitive windows of opportunity and that's how the practice of the Tao, that not not that it's a ritual, but it's a it's a a practice of of thinking these things out and and of trying to learn from past experiences of what you did and didn't take and whether those things that you didn't take that you might have been better off taking and those things that you did take that you might have been better off leaving behind. Some things you take and they end up being more of a burden. And you realize, wait a sec, you know what? For instance, if I, if I drink these juices and they make me sick, then I'm thinking, well, at the moment, at the time, I was tempted. At the time, it was a temptation. I thought, fantastic, eight and a half gallons of juice. How lucky can you get? But then if you drink it and you start getting sick from it, then you say, wait a second. Mm, I chose a yin when I should have chosen yang. And that is it, basically, ladies and gentlemen. That was my my thoughts going through my head about yin and yang, about how do you... Uh, opportunities taken or or let go. Sometimes it's better you have to cultivate it's better to let things go as when you're playing a video game. Sometimes you might be tempted by certain little um, treasures that that you think, you know, I get all many, these many points if I reach this, but but it's in an inaccessible place and if you go trying to reach it, you won't. If you go trying to reach that special treasure, you're going to end up falling into the pit because you can't get to it. And it's just a temp that So that treasure is a temptation. Which isn't, it's not like in Christianity you say, oh, well, temptation, it's a sin. Avoid temptation. Now, some of the statements, original statements from the Bible about temptation made perfect sense. They say, um, try to, they would say things like, try to avoid temptation because temptation can lead you into bad situations. Later on, the church became authoritarian about it and said, you must not yield to any temptation whatsoever. And that's when it starts to become absurd because there are a lot of temptations which are specifically designed to draw you into a, a beneficial situation. If, you, if I said, okay, well, 
I'm not going, yeah, I'm tempted to go see this stretching machine, but no, no, Jesus doesn't want me to yield to temptation. I must not go see that stretching machine because that would be temptation. And I'm sitting there thinking, ah, look at me. I resisted temptation. I'm a good Christian. I did go out to look at that, uh, that stretching machine because that would have been temptation. Then what happens is I've missed the opportunity that was of it, was presented there. Not that, not that I should pick up that stretching machine, but by being drawn out there, I realized here was my opportunity to get the bicycle tire that I did need. <laughs> I really, and I want the inner tube for the bicycle. I needed it, and I wasn't hadn't made plans on going out there to get it. That I would have had to specifically plan on walking out there to buy the thing. I would have thought, oh, I don't want to walk that distance to get that. But with the temptation of the machine, of the stretching machine, it wasn't, it didn't become a burden, the idea of walking out. It became like, ah, I'm interested in, uh, sure, I'll go and I'll walk out there. And then I find myself, there I am in West Newton, and I say, here, I'm, not, I'm just a, a few streets away from the inner tube that I actually needed to go get anyhow and wasn't about to go get on my own, but here I am, and I got it. So it, resisting temptation as a blanket, as, as temptation is always evil, temptation is always wrong, that's a bit absurd. That's, that's a very Western Christian type of authoritarian notion that, oh, well, there's good and evil. <laughs> the ta Taoism... Yin and Yang doesn't say, well, you can say Yin and Yang are good and evil, but usually that's not how it's described. Good and evil are sort of authoritarian notions, whereas well, we, if you might describe it as beneficial or less beneficial, beneficial or detrimental, would be better than good and evil. So the Tao will bring you, you can be, temp be drawn to one flow one way or another through what you might call temptation, or you might call that a law of attraction. So instead of talking about temptation, as they do in the Bible, let's talk about attraction, the flow of attraction. There, there it's less made into a, a, a sin type of a situation, uh, a you must not do this sort of situation. Laws of attraction. That there are laws of attraction in the flow, in the natural flow, the natural towel, the natural path. There's laws of attraction, but they're not laws. They're not authoritarian laws. They're just, this is, this is something that exists. That's all law in the sense that gravity is a law. It's not something that you're going to break and then be arrested for. It's just, this is, the, this is something that exists. Uh, gravity exists. And gravity is attraction. <laughs> That's right. Gravity is a law of attraction. In fact, it's, in fact, it's probably I think it's described sometimes as laws of attraction. The, the law of gravity is is objects being attracted to each other, and that's what what causes gravity. And sure, things there is gravity. Things can be attracted to each other, but it doesn't mean that things always have to head toward each other. You can head away from something, and then uh, you, you can climb up a ladder. If you're climbing up a ladder, you're going against the law of attraction, you could say, because you're going in the opposite direction. But then when you're at the top of the ladder, and if you feel like jumping off, or going up a diving board, you're going up, off, up a diving board, you're going against the law of gravity, in a sense. You're going against gravity. But then once you're up on top of the diving board, then you use gravity to your advantage, but the laws of attraction attract you down into the water when you jump off the diving board. So there's, there's a lot of a lot of concepts. Uh, I can't believe anybody. It's been like an hour or something. I can't believe anybody's listening to this for an hour, and yet there's some some substance to it. Some 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 of the concepts I've brought up here are worth pondering, maybe worth condensing. So it's less than an hour. Maybe it's five minutes. Would be a lot better. Um, everywhere you go, there's opportunities, and there's a question. Sometimes, sometimes uh, leaving an opportunity is better, more beneficial than than trying to grab every opportunity. But even so, that's the flow. The, the opportunities that you decide to leave where they're where they are, and not 
in, invest your energy into pursuing that thing, that opens you up, it puts you in a different place and opens you up to a whole new spectrum of other opportunities that are around everywhere else just waiting for you. And it may well be that you're brought to a better opportunity by your attraction to the first one, even though the first one wasn't ultimately to be a permanent uh, destination, but it could be a flowing towards a better destination that you wouldn't have known about, you wouldn't have, uh, opportunities you wouldn't have encountered if you hadn't been attracted, or we, let's use the word tempted, you know? If you hadn't been tempted by this one situation, but you have, but the whole, the whole crux of mastering, if you view it this way, the whole crux of mastering this notion of Tao. It's like being the master of a vid- mastering a video game, knowing exactly how to, to do the flow of knowing which things to grab and which things to let go. That's like, a, I'm, I'm sure somebody who really to study and master these notions of Tao you could definitely use it on video games, although personally I think it's kind of kind of a waste of that um, of that discipline, kind of a waste of that kind of a knowledge that there are in fact that that, that even video games themselves can constitute a form of temptation that may be uh, less beneficial in the end, detrimental if you spend all your time playing the video games you're letting other opportunities pass you by but even so, I think you could use this in playing video games, uh, and it, it's a, as a, and and if video games would train people in this skill in a way that they would realize that they're being trained in this, in so that they in a way that would be useful in their regular lives, that would be a good kind of a video game. You call that the Tao video game. Um, this probably isn't even, this probably even stopped recording long ago and it's just blinking the flashing light making me think it's still recording when it isn't. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing of all, but also a little bit of sadness that I wasted all that time talking for nothing. And that's the flow if you, that that the the temptation the attraction. The attraction towards um certain things that Whatever it is, you need to ma- oh, to, the, to master the Tao, to master the the flow of Tao in your life. It's just master. Forget the word Tao. Just the flow of your own life, the flow of your own experiences. To be able to master that of feel of of getting a feel. So maybe so you don't even have to consciously make these decisions, but. So it just comes naturally to you without having to think about it. In the same way that the river, there's a grackle outside my window. There's a there's a river flows in the in the in a sense a seemingly perfect way without having to consciously think about it. The river doesn't have to decide in a conscious manner. I'm going to flow to the left. I'm going to flow to the right. It just does it naturally. Uh, and a tree doesn't probably have to consciously decide how to grow. It just does it naturally. And if we could really master the Tao, that, that would be we would learn to incorporate this into our natural knowledge where we don't even, where it becomes subconscious. We don't even have to consciously make, uh, decide that, oh, how should I do it? And this, I don't know. In just we encounter situations. If we really became Taoist masters, we would find ourselves flowing in this natural manner where in each situation it would just sort of fall naturally into our hands. Yes, this is the thing I should take and you take it. Or this is the thing I should probably leave behind and you leave behind and that's it. That would be the mastery of the Tao. And to learn that there is this notion in the whole, in this whole business, in, in mastering this, you would come to uh, to understand or to feel it, in, just naturally feel it in, inside of you, that there is the law of of attraction is a law of flowing, 
So you do, you don't say, oh, well, all attraction is bad. All temptation is bad. Because a temptation may merely be an attraction in one direction. Which brings you around to another direction you would never have encountered if you hadn't had the initial laws of attraction in the other direction. So you go with the natural flow of the laws of attraction. And I'm going to end this on that note. I think I've talked way too long. And uh, God love you <laughs> if you've actually listened to this shit for an hour. Okay, that's it. You say goodbye and I say hello. Or it's time to say goodbye and I say go, go, go.